Welcome to Woman Witness Podcast, the stories at the well. I'm your host, Thea Fortier. Welcome to another episode of Woman Witness Podcast, The Stories at the Well, where we bring together women who have stories, who are out here doing it and making a positive impact and making a difference in the communities and the lives around them. Today, I have such a special, special guest that I really fell in love with because what she has to offer and what she has to say, you guys have to hear it. So with that being said, I want to introduce you to two-time author. Her first book is John B. Are You Still Down? The second book is The Whole Entrepreneur, which I, Dominique, I cannot wait to get it talking about the whole entrepreneur because I really cannot wait to find out what you wrote about and what you have to share with us. Um, she was a STEM trailblazer and author, massage practitioner, and a journalist. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you Dominique Carson. Dominique, welcome to The Well. Tell thank us you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So excited to be here. I just had a few minutes to chit chat with Leah and full of life and personality. And I'm just ready to, you know, meet this audacious woman and see what we're working with, what we're talking about. I give you just a recap of who I am. I'm originally from the NYC, Brooklyn to be exact. Okay. I currently reside in Virginia Beach. Okay. I have been practicing massage for four years, but I think it was kind of like manifested years earlier. It was something that I was playing around with since I was 17 after receiving my first massage at 17. But well, I'll get into that a little bit later. My journalist journey began when I was 16. So this has been a 17 year journey. And as far as my, you know, authorship, you know, I have two books, but I realize people are, co are counting collaboration books and, and being in journals. So I have to say I've written six pieces of literature in the last three years. Yes. I love six that. Six pieces Dominique. of literature. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> six pieces of published literature that came yes. from you. So absolutely. Yes. You said you got into massage therapy when you were 16. So tell us a little bit more about that. How did you get, uh, wait, did you say 17? 17. You your first massage. I wish. Yes. Okay. Let me just say that. I thought I was too cute. I was like, my parents <laughs> took me to a spa, honey. Y'all okay. took my money and clothes. <laughs> my ever in high school, I graduated in 2008. So okay. I was right at the end of the millennium. So yeah. I think that was one of the best years of going to high school. So my parents, they wanted to do something different. It's like I said, giving us money and clothes and all that stuff, especially for my brother. My brother is an athlete, all-timer, football player, running back. And, I was a town boy. They always get massages. If yes. you know, I have, I'm raising athletes myself, so I know that they stay in there getting working out those muscles. This was the first time. For the yeah. both of us, like my mother's been getting massages. Like my pops, he was treating her to like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, birthdays, just because. Yeah. But this time they wanted to do something different. My younger sister was too young. She was 13. So we went to a spa called Serenity. And I remember my brother, he saw this male therapist coming. He's like, no, like no. I don't want, <laughs> no, I don't want a male <laughs> therapist. So they switched him to a female uh -huh. and uh -huh. I originally had a female. Uh -huh. And when I got out this session, I was just like, oh my God, it was like a euphoria. Yes. I was like, I was like no, what did I get? <laughs> what yes. am I getting myself into? Yes. This is, I said, mom, this is what you've been doing for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. So now. I just thought it was going to be my self-care as a young adult. Mm -mm. No. That's when I'm grandma, that grandma hands, that grandma wisdom come in. See, I mm. always knew the sturdiness of my hands, like the craftsmanship mm. of my hands from as a child. But I didn't think massage therapy. And so one day my grandmother had these aches and pains. She was a diabetic. She had them from time to time. And I did like a light compression mm. on her. And that's okay. when she said, you're going to have another career using your hands. Oh, I wow. said, what? I said, grandma, 
I'm a journalist. I use my hands. You see the pen? Like, you got to hold it. She said, you heard what I said, girl. Anytime she said, you heard what I said, I was like, okay, this lady is not playing. Like, she's serious. She said, and they're going to help people. So I said, all right. So I kept that in the back of my mind. But you want to make sure that your grandparents are not being biased because, you know. Yeah. So I started exploring it a little bit between my cousins and my mother and, you know, friends that I knew from around the way. And it was like, yo, Dom, you need to be doing something with your hands, too. Now, how did you know what you were doing, Dominique? I knew officially when I was getting paid in college. (laughs) Mm, Come on. And I started doing math. I was like. We had to from license. <laughs> I couldn't do it no more because that's when I found out it was a felony. So I was like, mm, can, we can't do that no more. Oh, it's okay. a felony. <laughs> it's a class D felony if you're practicing massage without a license. Oh, okay. Yeah, y'all that's a class that. D felony. Class D that. felony, y'all. <laughs> but this is a professional class D felony. So I said, because I'm thinking about money that folds. And I was getting the money that folds. Just for pocket money, you know, yeah. paying for books, whatever. So right. I said, imagine if I'm licensed with this thing. Mm. Credibility. Mm. So it's still not clicking yet, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I graduate from college. I get my bachelor's, get my master's. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm making decent decent money, you know, in New York and hitting those nine to fives that transfer your media related skills. And yeah. you're freelancing at this point. Yeah. And you're freelancing. You're interviewing some of the most notable entertainers in the industry. Oh, wow. Yeah, at this point. But at the same time, you're feeling unfulfilled. Now, why, Dominique? Because the money was decent. I got my master's when I was 23. I got my master's three weeks before I turned 24. You go, girl. But at the time, it was a celebration, but I felt like I was more of a target because more doors was closing for me. It was like, okay, God, like, why you keep sending me on these interviews? Mm. I'll be on the first interview, second interview, even third. And these people are playing around. So I was like, okay, God, what is it that you want me to see? Because this is not clicking. Like, I shouldn't be have to be going all these interviews. And I have an advanced degree now. So I said, you know what? I'm still freelancing all these different publications. And I'm still using my journalism skills with these nine to fives and nonprofit and higher ed. Where I felt like something was missing mm. until my 25th birthday, my mm. grandfather gave me a hundred dollars. I felt in my spirit, it was a now or never to apply to massage school. And I applied. I used the hundred dollars he gave me to apply. Wow. Yeah. Wow. At what point did you feel like this, this was the right move? When I was accepted to the program. Did you ever doubt that you wouldn't be? No, it's not that. But when you, like I tell people, even though I would have been accepted, it's a different subject of study. Like I come from a media communications background. Now you're going to tell me I got to start learning science and history and and social sciences. Like science was like my least favorite subject in school. And then I still questioned it in the beginning Uh because I, I failed the first section of anatomy by two points. Really? Two points. Two points. Interesting. And I remember crying to my mother, to my fiance at the time. And he was like, okay, what you going to do? What we what we doing here? Because it's not going to be the rest of the night. What are you going to do? Because the woman I know, she going to dust it off and she going to do what she got to do. So what are we doing? Yeah. I'm like, well, you don't understand. I'm trying to talk to them. I'm passing all the massage courses. And this lady couldn't give me a break. Right. Oh, nope. interesting. And he, and he just looking at me like, okay, what you going to do? So I had like a day <laughs> to fit, just basically like a day. And um, I got it together. I took the summer course. I got a STEM grant. Mm. So that's that's when the bell started ringing STEM. I said, okay. okay. I got a STEM grant to fulfill this course that I need to take again. Okay. okay. And yeah. I was working full time, taking the bus, coming and going from Queens to Brooklyn mm. in the summertime. This is hot, like June, July. Yes. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. When I saw that one, because you have to you have to get a C, at least a C in your science courses. So when uh-huh. I saw the C plus, I was like, okay, I'm in the race. But then I said, you know what, Dominique, you have to take these science courses very, very seriously. And from okay. that, that was a reality check yeah. for me. And then after that, I saw the progression from a C plus uh-huh. to an A by the time I finished my science program, like the, the science courses in my program. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, Dominique. So you knew at that point that this is something that piques my interest. This is something that I need to pursue. Yes, yes. Hmm. And I had the right professors. Yeah. I had the right colleagues at the time. It was it was just a phenomenal was a different group. professor than the first one? Yes. 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 Mm. Interesting. Yes, Interesting. yes, which makes a huge difference being in the right yes, environment. Yes, it does. It, right it makes the right environment, the right energy, just yeah. the deliverance. And then yeah. I saw like my lab courses in the anatomy was, I think the lowest I had was an eighty-eight wow. in the lab courses wow. because I I had to change my mindset. They said, you know what? All right, science is not your most you know popular subject for you to master. Yeah, but this is what you need. You can't think about what you want at that moment. I had to think about what I, what is it that I need to successfully complete this program and be successful at it. Yeah, and I said my mindset it had to start with me. Between the tough love I had from my fiance at the time, like he was not giving me no mercy. He was like, no, okay, you, he was like, no, okay, we because we we went out that night and I was crying. I was like, he's like, it's not gonna be our evening. Like, no, what yeah. are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, Dominic, if I can just elaborate on that a little bit more, because one thing I love that you said, and I feel like a lot of us women, Mm -hmm. or a lot of us, period, um, we, I feel like we get stuck in the woes me um, and feeling sour for ourselves, which Mm -hmm. is fine. Like I heard you say before, it's fine to, you know, have a moment of pity, have a moment of, you know, reflection. Mm -hmm, But don't stay there. Mm -hmm. Don't stay there. And I love the fact that you said that and because it puts it into perspective that if we just keep going, if we keep pushing, if we are surrounded by the right people that won't let us stay there, okay, Mm -hmm. Um, but push through it, that there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel and we Mm -hmm. want more out of us than we think that we have in us. Yeah. I just love that point. So I had, I wanted to. um, Thank you. Say that girl. Thank and it was you. those Thank two. You. It was, you know, it was him and my mom. And my mother was like, okay, you can't talk your way out of this on this one. Mm, These yeah. are numbers. You can't talk your way. <laughs> your environment you matters. Way. Girl, come on. <laughs> I love I love it. So so tell so tell me about the STEM massage. I hear okay. STEM theme and it's it's taking off and it's rolling and I love it. I have little mm-hmm. ones right now and I anything that I can get my hands on that is STEM that I try to get them involved in. I want them to be excited about it. But how do we put STEM and massage together? I don't think I've ever heard. Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so it started, started circulating in my brain once I got the STEM grant. Mm. For the anatomy, right? Yeah. So STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm-hmm. Massage therapy deals with science. Yes. We deal with life sciences, mm-hmm. social sciences, mm-hmm. kinesiology, pathology, mm-hmm. neurophysiology, allergies. Yes. A lot of allergies that we deal with as massage practitioners, providers, techs, whatever you want to call us, as long as you don't call us masseuse, we deal with the sciences, period, point blank. Okay. Um, Pathology, we have to notice the type of diseases that we need to know to Mm -hmm. to modify the treatment plan that we're going to give you. I'm not going to give you the same treatment for someone that was diagnosed with cancer or osteoporosis or diabetes or neuropathy or any other autoimmune diseases, right? Right. Psychology. We deal with the study of the mind, how massage therapy affects you psychologically, how it increases your sleep, how Mm -hmm. it increases your dopamines, your neurotransmitters. Yes. Gives you mental clarity. 
Yes. That's psych. Mm -hmm. That's study of the mind. Mm -hmm. Nerves. Sociology. Study of people. Massage mm -hmm. providers need to know you're going to come across people from all walks of life. How to interact with people that have, have to deal with trauma through touch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because touch mm -hmm. is such an innate desire that people yeah. have. But what about those that touch was violated? And I can understand it to an extent because I was violated sexually as a child. So I get it. I get it. I get it. So that's 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 a very heavy subject. Right. So these are all this is all the psychological benefits of massage therapy. Like I said, the anatomy, we have to deal with your body systems and how massage reacts to all the 11 body systems mm. we deal with the technology aspect because we have the different apps that we have to use to fulfill your your soap notes to contact appointments to contact clients we use various software to stay in touch with the client then you could take it another level steam because yeah. massage therapy is also an art right it's a healing art it's a skill mm. it's a craftsmanship Mm. But that idea began after receiving that STEM grant when I was in massage school. And one of my author buddies, shout out to Tiffany Tichi. She's oh, a STEMpreneur. She created the STEM Crew magazine. And mm. I was on her show and she was like, I want to see how you could relate this to STEM. And by the time we finished our conversation, she said, man, all I heard was allergies. and and Because a lot of people don't really think of it that no. way and mm -hmm. massage therapy has been a stepping stone for a lot of people to partake in other professions whether that's nursing occupational therapy physical therapy exercise science etc yeah. etc yeah absolutely <laughs> that's why i'm interested in reading your book the whole entrepreneur because i strongly believe my mind works in a way that i i look at a a a person and I can listen to you talk and tell me everything that you have. I can go onto your social media and put everything that you have out there, but then my mind takes a little bit further and I can mm -hmm. see such a huge wide reach with your business right now that I would love to actually, we could talk about it later. I want to put it out here for everybody <laughs> to see here, but I see where you are going with it. And I love it. I got into a really bad accident almost six years ago and I mean, tried everything. I had everything from vertigo to mm -hmm. pinched nerves in my neck. Uh, there was mm -hmm. a point I could hold my six, six month old son at the time. Wow. It was awful. And I tried everything. Chiropractors, which I would not recommend. I'm sorry. Sorry. I just wouldn't recommend it because it didn't help me. Um, mm -hmm. I found myself in more pain than what was needed until mm -hmm. I to then seek out not a massage therapist, kind of what you're saying, it's someone who was a trained professional who was actually able to work out all the the built up. I don't don't forgive me, Dominique. I'm going to say these words wrong. Okay, so knots. <laughs> the knots, the muscles. Um, you know, I'm sorry. I got to keep. I got to stay on my level here. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. <laughs> Until all that was released, I began to then, I was able to then deal with everything else. I mean, everything. I felt like from that accident and beginning to work out what was like truly going on, didn't realize how stressed I was. Didn't realize even that I was suffering from postpartum depression a little bit. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize that I had so much going on. And you would think from an accident, Kind of like what you were talking about, and I'm not going to go into what you're because everyone just heard it, but it is all integrated together. And if you were able to get in in the right in the presence of the right person who knows what they are doing, they can really begin to work some of those stressors, and they can really begin to work some of that out. So it can really put you in a place where you can now get down to the root of what is what is it? What is? But really that's that's what my mom had a similar situation. She was diagnosed with myosciatosis. That's an autoimmune oh. disease where the immune system mm -hmm. starts attacking the muscles. Mm -hmm. And I had to break it down like myosciatis, like myo. Mm -hmm. I said to her, muscle. Itis mm -hmm. is inflammation. 
mm. and tissues. Mm -hmm. wow. And she was like, but I think if I didn't have a daughter that is a massage practitioner, I would have been freaking out. A hundred percent. But because she said, I, but oh, your knowledge has helped me come to terms with this disease or this condition that I have and how to regulate it and not underestimate stress and what emotional stress can do yes. to the body. Because yes. I said, yeah, it makes sense because you're adding foreign substances. And this is not yes. even the good stress. Like when you about to get on a roller coaster and you about to feel like that last minute jump. Yeah, like, it's not even that type of good stress, not even right. that type of stress. So now right. you add in all these foreign substances that's mm -hmm. making these cortisol levels go up. Mm, that's it. And now there, there's a there's a disease in your yeah. body because that's what disease is, is a disease in your body. Wow, Dominique. Wow. So this is why I believe that knowledge is key. And this is why I believe I seek out people, one who are professionals and who know what they are talking about, because I will tell you, I had a friend who suffered or who had something very similar to what I had. Mm -hmm. And what they want to do is, you know, a lot of your doctors, they want to just give you medication. Yep. Pills. Pills. Pills, pills, pills. I had muscle relaxers and at, there was a point I said, why am I taking these? I already can't move. I already cannot pick up my child because of the pinched nerve. But when you take too many of these, I feel that it really makes, it puts you in a place of discomfort. You can't do mm -hmm. it. Insomnia. Some of them get very yes. numb, yes. highly addictive. Yes. A hundred percent. And I, I do not like, I don't like taking medication, period. So I realized quickly that this is not for me. And I never would have thought by getting in the right presence of the right people. Remember, we were talking about mm -hmm. your surroundings and being around the right people. Never knew that that would actually ease my pain. Mm -hmm. And it's knock on wood, it has been um, at least five years since I, you know, had that discomfort. But mm -hmm. I believe that once if we share more of that, Dominique, share what it is that you do. I think you'll be able to really touch a lot of people, especially women. Thank you. And I, I get it. I get what you say. Like, even with the vets, because I have partnerships with Seal and Soothe. And I think mm -hmm. people it had to take the pandemic to realize, like, I really should be practicing my self-care. Like, I really need to get my priorities in order and my health is a part of my self-care. And I think when the, the pandemic shut down and made people look at us massage professionals as really healthcare providers, like this is a yeah. this is medicine. Like this is not you, just luxury yeah. for people. And now know. that the, the veteran affairs are paying vets to get massages. Very interesting. That's amazing. Yes. And that helps them because they deal with so much. Mm. I think that's the least you can do. They have served our country. I tell people, yes, these military individuals, they get a lot of benefits, as yeah. they should. Yeah. But you don't know what they deal with. Back Not pain, enough, chronic opinion. pain, PTSD. Yeah. Some of them dealt with substance abuse at one point because yeah. like we talked about those opiates, right? So yeah. let's say a doctor is giving you an opiate. Maybe mm -hmm. worth a hundred, two hundred dollars a month, right? Mm -hmm. You're a vet overseas. You get a mm -hmm. drug that's cheaper, mm -hmm. aka the nickname for it, smack or heroin, because heroin is an opioid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why some of the vets eventually start using heroin. It's cheaper. It's more accessible. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to keep paying a yeah. high, high amount of pain. Yeah, And then it, it starts to help them cope with all the other mechanisms that they deal with, yeah. with vets. And I can understand it to an extent because I've had family members yeah. that were veterans, that did yeah. the Army, the Air Force, yeah. and even clients. Right. They, they just, and then getting on that table, whether it's 60 minute, 90 minute, two hours, they facilitate so much emotional release. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Dominique needs me more talk about that. And I'm so glad that they are doing something that to help our vets because far too many of them are suffering in silence, forgotten. Yep. 
and I can go on and on. So I'm going to stop. I want to go back to something that you said, and because I believe that bringing all stories to the well is so important. Someone who is a victim of trauma in the past, talk to us about ways that they can begin to overcome those feelings of and those thoughts and that trauma to move towards maybe possibly putting themselves in a position where they can allow themselves to be massaged and okay. to work out some of those. Well, this is what I love to tell my clients. Massage mm. is half the battle. What you do off the table, mm. prior to the table, that's mm. on you. One of my author colleagues, Dr. Iris Wright, she said, yeah. a closed wound is not a healed wound. When she said that, I was like, bars, like powerful. Yeah. Because you know how much stuff we try Absolutely. to hide and try to camouflage and try to shut down because it's yeah. too real? Yeah. But that's not solving it. And I hate to say it because it's our people. We yeah. like to sweep stuff under the rug and yeah. whatever goes in this house stays in this house. I think that is the most ignorant thing that you that it's a parent a mindset, can say. Dominique, that a lot of us was brought up with. I can tell yeah. you that. <laughs> I agree I, with do you. you know how many times I heard that? From, I'm like, what? <laughs> I think that is the, the most ignorant thing that I... But you just think that everybody grew up with that, right? That's what I used to think. I'm like, does everybody else think this way? <laughs> but I get, but I get why people say that because you know people tell your business. You yes. think you venting the people, and yep. people start gossiping about what you're doing. Yeah. So I get that's a I get that part, but that's that's extent, still right. even unhealthy. Right. So yeah, I would tell a client you have to deal with the trauma, yeah. and I I would say that's still in my scope of practice. Yeah, because I tell clients I am not a psychotherapist. Right. I am not a psychologist. I manage your body. I don't manage what's in your head. Right. But all I can tell you from my scope of practice yeah. that you have to deal with your trauma. Yeah. So I give you a scenario. When I first started massaging clients in New York, after I got my my license in New York, mm -hmm. I was working with a young woman. Mm -hmm. She was a survivor of domestic violence. So I saw her trembling on the table. Oh. And the first thing I asked her is, do you still want to continue with the session? Mm. And she said, yes. The spa I was working for at the time, people have to pay extra for aromatherapy. Mm. When, the spirit told, when the spirit told me to use my aromatherapy. So I mixed the peppermint and the lavender together. Mm. I told her to take two breaths. Mm. Two strong breaths. Put my yeah. hands on her back. Don't you know she stopped trembling? Uh. Mm, mm, mm. That's why whatever you're going through as a therapist, wow. you have to get that in order. Because if you don't, it's going to reflect in your work. So whatever issues is going on in your personal life, you yeah. need to kick that to the door. I place my hand on the client's back with the aromatherapy, diluting it with the oil. She stopped. Because it's relaxing. Yeah. It's not harmful. But I still had to respect her feelings and ask her, checked in with her. I checked in with her when I turned her over and lying on her stomach. I said, are you okay? Can we still proceed with the session? She said, yes. Wow. I saw it from the body language I can. Right. But I still needed her verbal consent. Yeah. I like that, Dominique. I like that. Yeah. And I think because it, if you don't mind me just saying this, when we are healed ourselves and we have faced our own trauma, me, mm -hmm. I, I'm also too a victim of childhood trauma and being victimized. And I think that I was no good for anybody. I wrote books and I began to tell my story, but mm -hmm. I really couldn't tell my story, Dominique, until I was healed. And once I was be once I started down that path of healing, I was able to then be able to receive others and their stories. Mm -hmm. I can identify them and I can listen. Because people so, think you healing because you got like a Zen closet and no and no yeah. and no shade, no tea. When I say this, when you yeah. drinking smoothies and go, I'm yeah. like you may be healed on the outside, right. but what's going on on your inside? Because from what I from what I believe. 
what you feel in your inside is going to interfere with your outside uh-huh. at some point. Uh-huh. And I think we've yeah. all in life have dealt with some type of trauma, some type of obstacle, because we're on earth. You're going to have, you're in sin. Like you're going to deal with something at some point. Right. But how you handle it. Right. It makes you different from others. Right. And I think it, it's, for me, it was a combination of my upbringing, yeah. my faith in God, and just making the decision to be better, to have better. So others can do better that are behind me. Dominique, can can you tell me what made you make that decision? It's not just a decision that you wake up and say, "I'm gonna." No, do not at all. I'm gonna I, be not at all. I think <laughs> I think honestly, and I said this and then to another person when I was graduating from the eighth grade, and I was going to high school. My mother was like, "You see these walls? This is gonna be the stepping stone of what you do for the rest of your life." So you need to be wary on who you come across, the decisions you make, the yeah. people you affiliate with, because these decisions right here affect the years to come. And mm-hmm. I was like, Ooh. that was deep. That was heavy because yeah. I always, I always wanted to do well in school. So I already knew she was not talking about excelling in school because she knew right. I was going to do that. Right. It's the other temptations that come along with being a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. And when she she said that to me at 14, I was right. turning, I wasn't even 14 yet. I was turning 14. Right. I was like, wow. So when I said to her that you had that conversation with me as a teenager, now as an adult, she said, This is why. Because mm-hmm. these four years can make or break your decisions to come as a young adult and an adult. Yeah. And and I finally saw what my mother was trying to tell me when one of my childhood friends just hanging out, being a teenager, recreational drug use, tried yeah. marijuana, reefer for the first time, the yeah. typical runny eyes, whatever, right. munchies. Yep. The second time he tried it, it was laced. And that changed his whole no. Like for the next eight years of his life, he had a basketball scholarship. He was going to college, everything. Now, mind you, he graduated, did everything. But the high was so strong. And they laced it with rat poison. So now he's searching for a higher drug. That one decision can affect the years to come. And it affected the next eight years of his life. When I heard that, that broke my heart. And then I realized these are the conversations that my parents told me, but when my mother told me, it was like, okay, woman to woman conversation now. Cause now I'm not talking to you as a child. I'm talking to you as a teenager mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. 100%. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I think about situations like that, Dominique, because like you said, it takes one one, one, one thing, one chance, one being in the right, wrong place, the wrong time, one one instance to shape your future. And I love that your mom told you that. And I hope, and I pray that there are women, young women listening to this, that will take what you, what you heard at in the eighth grade and put it towards their lives and say, you know what? I'm going to think twice. I'm going to take an extra moment to run it by a trusted uh, Mm -hmm. family member or Mm -hmm. a colleague or a a fellow classmate to make sure that I am making the right decision because it can shape the rest of my future. We also had a a principal, Mr. Um, Anthony Lodico. Every school year, he gave us these four A's that we had to take with us. And as a kid, you, as a teenager, you're like, oh my God, he's so redundant. Like, why are you <laughs> saying these A's? But mm-hmm. now as an adult, these A's are so necessary. So the A's he gave us was accountability, yeah. attendance, achievement, attitude. Yes. Yes. I love all of them. Mm-hmm. Needs no explanation. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And you still remember every it. school year. Every, I'm telling you, it was religiously, Leah. Like he would say <laughs> this. Like we all in the school gym. Wow. <laughs> all the all the grades are in the school gym. 
And he's saying these A's every school year. Every time we, we every time we started a new school year, Mr. Anthony Lodico will say these four A's. Accountability, attendance, achievements, achievements, and attitude. And attitude. That's good. Y'all listen to that. Thank you, Anthony Lodico. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You heard it. <laughs> you heard it here. Thank you for sharing that. And he's and he's right. He's absolutely right. Dominique, tell us the eight things that you should know about a massage. Okay. Oh, you you did a search. That girl, oh, I you. can't say. <laughs> oh, you I would give me, say give me, word. give me. I would say the biggest one out of the eight is be on time. Be on time and fill out your paperwork. Those because are the two. Why? That's because your time. That's your time. And the more time you waste, your session cut off short. Like, especially if we have clients back to back to it. You don't know how many times I say that. I said, you guys need to be here before to fill out your paperwork, to use the bathroom. Like, so how, because how these times, because those, thinking? I would say like 10 to 15 minutes before you need to get, because I'm saying okay. these two reflect the other okay. six that I mentioned. Yeah. Because when you do, when you fill out your form, I can get an idea on how to fulfill my treatment. I can know what's going on with you. And two is by law. It's a liability. Yes. Because I cannot perform a massage until that paperwork is done. It's a law. Mm -hmm. And I had to tell the client that one day. She was like, I can't do this after. I said, no, ma'am. You, you expected when you're expecting, you have great expectations in front of me. So that means you really got to fill out paperwork. Before I tell you, because you your time. great expectation. Expect what? Your great expectation. No, you said expect what you are expecting. Yes. Is what you said? Mm-hmm. That's good. Sorry. That's good. And everybody needs to take that with them in everything that they do. Expect mm-hmm. what you are expecting. Expecting. Okay. Sorry, Dominique. Go ahead. <laughs> so, I'm, no, I mean, that, 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 I think I, you know, that was like a moment. I'm just saying a word. And I'm like, I'm, okay, Leah, just backtrack. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Because, so, you know, I'm like you. I listen to words. I think words are so powerful. And I try mm-hmm. my best to make sure I get them right. But nobody is perfect. But I will tell you something. I can hear a good word when you say it. One of my New Year's resolution this year was expectations. Because I, I just did a podcast called The Miracle of Expectations. Mm-hmm. And um, I do believe that when we expect good things to happen, it's going to happen. You were a part of a conference. I believe it was author conference. Author All Stars. Mm-hmm. And you said something in this little clip that you put up. You said that you, I don't know if you said you got on that plane by yourself and went to Atlanta. Was Where was mm-hmm. it held at? I don't mm-hmm. know that you went by yourself, but you went and you did. Yes. You expected something out of that. So mm-hmm. just tell me moving into moving into us talking about your book, The Whole Entrepreneur. Tell me about your experience at this author conference. Why did you just go by yourself? What made you expect to do <laughs> the good things to come from that? Tell me about that. The last few months... Life was just happening, kind of going through the financial wave, losing one of my friends to breast cancer. It was just a lot of, you know, a lot of personal things that were going on at the time. And I was like, I don't know if I could really go. And I said, Dominique, we're not, we not going to cheat ourselves. We're we going to figure it out and God going to make a way. Boy, did he make a way. And being on time, see, being on time, yeah. doing stuff early and not doing stuff the last minute. I was able to get a flight. Cause I booked it early and it was cheap. Yeah. So that was, so that was, I was like, checkmate. Yeah. And yep. I had a lot of people sponsoring me to go to all the all stars. So I was like, checkmate. It doesn't hurt to ask. You don't, I tell people closed mouths don't get fed. The okay. words that a person could tell you is no. Yes. But how you don't know if you don't ask. A hundred percent. And I had to learn that early on. Cause I remember I was in a pageant and I had to go through the same process of pitching something to my uncle. My uncle Robbie, God bless his soul, was the first man I had to pitch to. Really? About what I what, what was what was something important to me. And my mother, being the mother, she was like, No, you're gonna call your uncle yourself. Yeah. And you're gonna tell him. Because you're 15. You're gonna call your uncle and you're gonna tell him. 
Yeah. So my uncle is this very Solomon military man, Air Force. Mm -hmm. So he's listening to me while I'm pitching my spin. Mm -hmm. And he's quiet and he's quiet. And maybe about a week later, I got a check in the mail that paid half of my youth pageant registration fee. Wow. Half wow. of the money he gave me. Mm -hmm. Wow. How old were you? I was 15. I love your mama. <laughs> my, I'm telling you. Come on, my, my ambition is for my mama. <laughs> your mama already. Goodness gracious. My ambition it comes from my mother. Like I tell people that. You see that drive. That's that's my I mother. Yeah. Mama watching. Book. Yeah. Your mama watching write her. Book. Man, <laughs> she even <laughs> said that. <laughs> you write book saying, your mama. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it from my mama. Mm-hmm. And I she said, you it. see, she said, you see why I told you. So I had to go back to my 15 year old self. So if I could do that at 15, I can have the same drive at 33. I was in the author all-star magazine last year. So I was like, okay, let me go. Cause I didn't go last year. And I was, like, I'm going this year. And I was like, all these opportunities, you get to meet the authors that you've been talking to virtually all year. Wow. And your book mentor, Taria Vision of Art, is our book mentor. And now what, what's the name? Taria uh -huh. Vision of Art. She's our okay. book mentor. She's also the founder of Book Profits Club, which is I'm also a member. So that helps me mm -hmm. come up with different strategies and tips on how to leverage your book. Okay. So you can have multiple outlets of income. Okay. So we're at this author all star. I'm hearing all these people give their power talks and their speeches and and just collaboration. And it was so inspirational because I promise you, Leah, yeah. every author was going through something personally. Everybody yeah. was going through something. Even my coach was in a car accident, mm. and she could and she almost died. The, the tire went off. The ABS ABS button was showing in her Cadillac. Wow. And she said what kept her together and the car did not spin was our awards and plaques in the back of the car. Oh, this happened on the way to the event? Yes. Jesus. And she showed up. Amen. In one piece with plaques in hand. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what to say about that. And I'm usually not at a loss of words, but God. <laughs> That's what won't he do? We were like, won't he do it? We were like, oh my gosh. That's what won't he do it? Say, and, you know? and because of just showing up, you know, looking at life is short. Ever since me losing my friend, my childhood friend to breast cancer, I was like, Dominique, life is short. Like her life was cut short at 33. But she was yeah. not going to let that cancer break her. And I think what kind of really pushed me to go, I couldn't go to her funeral because the the way transportation was not going at times with her funeral. Because at first I was like, I'm in Virginia, she in Maryland. My mother was like, uh, no, you're not. Yeah. And somebody gonna be calling me saying that you got into a wreck because your emotional state ain't right. Oh. No, ma'am. So I yeah. looked at it, you know, all buses and trains not corroborating. So I listened to my spirit. I was like, have something in her honor. So I did a candle. I had some soul food because that girl used to cook some soul food, her and her mother. Aww. And maybe two to four days later after her homecoming, she came back to me in a dream. Hmm. And she wrote the first three letters of my name in an acronym. And the acronym is Diligence Always Mediocrity. So when you look at my Instagram page, that's the acronym. That is what it says, huh? I was wondering what that was. Diligence outweighs mediocrity. And from her writing that, I was like, okay, she's letting me know she's okay. And that became my slogan. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Dominique. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I'm so sorry to hear about your friend. I'm even more pleased that you were able to receive that closure and you can now take it and do something with it and really push mm -hmm. because I believe that's what you're doing. Now, was this before or after you went to the conference? This is before I went to the conference. She died three weeks before I turned 33. Mm. Goodness yeah. gracious. I'm so sorry to hear that. It's okay. I can tell you after hearing what you said that 
on that stage about going out there and doing it. Now, did everybody get a turn to speak or did they call you up? Yeah, we they called us up and I was okay. like, oh, hello. <laughs> you shut that down, okay? I mean, I was like, she ain't nervous at all. She just I think everybody, <laughs> it's funny that you said that, Leah. Like, I had cousins looking at me like, <laughs> where, where she knew that at? Like, wait, what? I had cousins right. like not even talking to me much. Like, I saw your video and da 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 da. And it was good. It was good. It's and it was good. like, yo, you like took the stage and just said, I got this. Like, hold up. I could you rehearse that? No. You just went up there and did I just went up there. Well, it it, it spoke to me. And one thing that you said <laughs> that I just want to just reiterate. You said you just got out there and you did it. Mm -hmm. And for everyone who, like you were just talking about before, who drags their feet, we all do. We all procrastinate. Mm -hmm. We're all fearful of something. Mm -hmm. But you did it. You did it early. You took advantage of it. And look at you rolling. I see such a bright future with you, Dominique. It is not even funny. I am so Thank glad you. that you reached out to us. Tell us a little bit about the whole entrepreneur. And okay. What inspired you to write it? And then tell us where we can find it. All right. So the whole entrepreneur is a collaboration project. And I always said I wanted to do a book collab, not being an anthology. I want to be a part of a book collaboration project. I said, okay. I wrote this and wrote it down two years earlier because mm. I knew the benefits of being collaboration projects, especially with books. 100%. So my book mentor, book coach, Taria, she posted around last March that she was looking for 20 authors and speakers to mm -hmm. be a part of this project. So we all got interviewed. We were on a call. We made out the, the our deposits, either you paid in for or whatever. And then the mm -hmm. pre-sales that we got from the book helped us with the marketing, the, the distribution, the editing, the advertising, all of that stuff. So mm -hmm. we wanted to come up with a book. That helps mm -hmm. people. And you don't even have to necessarily be an entrepreneur in the linear sense. Because that's one thing I love about the authors that I collaborate. A lot of us still have nine to fives. Yeah, Like, you should not be limited. Like, you should not be no. so square to tell somebody that they need to leave their nine to five. Or look them that funny because they have a nine to five and they have a side hustle. Or they have a business along with a nine right. to five. And that is the most stupidest thing that mm -hmm. people say, oh, like jobs is a jail operating business. I said, every entrepreneur needs employees. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody needs employees to run the business yes. so the business can flourish. Right. So like yeah. that, I think that is so such an ignoramus statement. So 20 of us, we talk about our experiences in business and career and wellness in my chapter. Mm -hmm. I go into further detail about my journey as a journalist and a massage therapist. Yeah. In the chapter, yeah. my biography in the book is more extensive because I, I think a lot of people see a lot of the achievements, but a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know the setbacks I have endured. So in the mm -hmm. bio, I give you more and extensive of that. And that was a challenge that my book coach was like, no, I need you to go deep on this one. Yeah. I was like, well, you want me to tell all my business? Like, Joe, go yeah. <laughs> like, no, because people need to yep. see the roller coaster. They need to see that you're a human. That they're not the only ones. Yeah. yeah. That's a book collab. Yep. So that that is a, a project I'm so proud of. People could click the link in my bio and Instagram yes. and they could purchase their copy and they'll have yes. it autographed and mailed to them personally. Oh, that's amazing. All mm -hmm. right. That is actually I'm I that's what I will be doing because I cannot <laughs> wait to get my hands on that book. I love the fact of what you said about how your writing coach when had you dig in a little bit more and give us more of your background and more of your history mm -hmm. because that's something that I do even with my mentees that I help write their books because you when one when people are able to see one that you are human mm -hmm. and that you are not this ideal image that they created of you right yes yes that's what I always love to say I'm not this ideal a person that you created. I mean, I'm human just like you. We all mm -hmm. go through some things, and which is why I created this platform of, called Woman Witness, just so we can just be a witness that we are we are more alike than what you think. We are more alike than what mm -hmm. we are able to even comprehend or share. Absolutely. So I, I love, love, love that. And I love the fact that you 
portray that on your social media. So everybody, please, I will put down Dominique's information in the bio and in the description. So you can follow her, follow her on all platforms. Definitely subscribe and like this video, share it with your friends, because I think that you will be, I know that you will be blessed by the conversation that we had today. Dominique, is there any closing words, anything that you want to leave our audience with before we log off the well? Let God lead your steps. You know, this is 2024. This is a year of abundance. As long as you do the work, that God leads your steps. And I could say that personally. I mean, I have a greater appreciation for life, especially me being next month will be the a full year since I had my car accident where I almost died. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking my car accident, your car accident, and then your the the girl. My mentor, like, yeah. The, the mentor. Mm, okay. Ordered steps. Divine mm -hmm. relationships. Mm -hmm. Follow, walk, go. I'm sorry, Dominique. Yeah. This is not my moment. Can you please finish? So, <laughs> so no, like you that. good. Like that's oh, the, that's what so remember we said. It, it has to have a flow. This is the flow. So, mm -hmm. with all that being said, and I'm a planner, and that's so hard for me because I like to plan, and you can plan all day, and that's good to have because without planning, how are you gonna get something done? But yeah to navigate through it. Like you got to let God do it and do the work. Yeah. Nobody yeah. owes you nothing in this life, but you owe it to yourself to be the best authentic self that you can be. Dominique, Dominique heard <laughs> today. Dominique Carson, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at this well, telling your authentic story giving us hope, giving us wisdom, being an example of how we can do it ourselves. And one thing that I love that you said, and I'm going to close with this, is you just talked about how some of us still have to have our, still keep our nine to five, but still go out and be an, that entrepreneur, still go out and follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. Because I do believe that eventually it, it there will come a time and a place that you can really live out your dreams, really live out what yeah. it is that you want to do. Your nine to five is going to be your business. Yes. And it ain't going to feel like a nine to five. You're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dominique, if I heard you correctly, I love our I loved our conversation today. So did I. So, very so natural. Much. Very uh, natural authentic authenticity is the key, I swear. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Same with you. Thank you, Dominique, for sharing your story here at this well. Again, thank you for tuning in to Woman Witness Podcast, The Stories at the Well. I'm your host, Leah Fordier. Until next time. Thanks, Dominique. Thank you. Thank you.